and it's been a little bit so now we're back part two of the age exploration for western civ chapter 13 starting back with the Ch spanish conquistadors and pizarro get uh the overthrow of the incan empire by this guy pizarro okay um the incans are famous for their long stretching empire their beautiful roads that help connect that the ability to send messages along these roads uh are hallmark of the incan empire and their famous uh temples at Machu picchu uh he conquers the incas in peru he actually had fewer men than cortez but he's able to do it through the use of superior technology and of course the same thing that happened with the incas or with the incas happened with uh the aztecs the incans the empires they had overthrown they ally themselves with the spanish just like happened with cortez and the aztecs okay the Incas actually had more men than the aztecs uh and but that doesn't stop them because uh even though pizarro was further from his supplies and supply lines He's got that greatest of all technology on his side, biological warfare. That's right, European diseases. They weren't doing it intentionally, but it certainly helped out. And then, of course, there's this guy, the first guy to not actually, first European to not actually sail around the world, Ferdinand Magellan. Okay, he's born Portuguese. He gets Spanish citizenship uh, as Portuguese get kicked out of their trade and become less important in sailing. Uh, people are jumping ship, so to speak, to go sail for the Spanish. Okay, He sets out to circumnavigate the globe in the Strait of Magellan at the uh, southern end of the South American continent uh, is named for him. Uh, he actually dies in a battle in the Philippines and doesn't make it around the world. Uh, a guy by the name of Juan Sebastian del Cano, or El Cano sometimes he is called, makes it back, uh, depending on the account, with one of five or one of six ships, only about 18 guys out of a starting crew of 200, investors still didn't lose their money. What does that say about the value of those spices? Okay, so here's a bit of his voyage. You can see leaving Spain here uh, through the Strait of Magellan over here to uh, various islands in the Pacific. That's here in the Philippines where he dies. And it's Del Cano or El Cano who gets back. Okay, now we're going to go to the Dutch as explorers. Okay, they have been part of the Spanish Empire. They are Protestants and they get their freedom uh, from them, backed by the English, which doesn't make Philip II uh, very happy. Again, part of the Spanish uh, Empire in uh, Europe, uh, up here in this area, as you can see right in here, in the small green. Uh, these are Protestants who want to get their independence from their Catholic kings, but they also inherit the ships and knowledge that they already gotten from Spain, and they're going to take over most of the Portuguese trade routes by force. They've got more money than the Portuguese, more men than the Portuguese, more supplies. That's how they're able to do it. Everyone always asks, why did the Portuguese fight back? They tried. They were just outnumbered. Okay. The Dutch also got over into the New World, exploring North America, which we refer to as New Amsterdam. Okay. They had colonies also in the Far East and in the East Indies. Okay. Colonies in Africa and even in India. And they become the first Europeans to reach Australia long before the English uh, but it's English they're going to be the sort of the thorn in the side for the Dutch and here they come the English and our good Queen Elizabeth the first that's her uh, of the red hair there and the very pale white face um, they are behind the others uh, and again a very poor country she inherits after her father spent lavishly that's Henry VIII and his multiple divorces and separating himself from uh, the Catholic Church and then his young son takes over at nine dies at 14 uh, his first daughter Mary who's Catholic takes over kills a bunch of people Bloody Mary and Elizabeth finally comes to the throne we've had sort of a religious civil war and everything else going on they're very poor Okay, there's also a debt from the Hundred Years' War with France still to pay off. Uh, they're very f fearful of Spain. Uh, remember uh, Mary, who had been uh, married to Philip II there? Uh, he sends an armada to try and crush them. But Queen Elizabeth is the one who then starts our exploration for the Spanish. <clears throat> Okay. She hires ships from captains, and I told you this story in class, okay? Gives them provisions, gives them weapons, gives them men in some cases. You know, we just kidnap and throw them on, and guess what? You're a sailor now, okay? They work for the queen, but 
not legally. Please sign here. Uh, this is where if we had a nice um, set of uh, production facilities, we'd have that voice and a little fine script going up there saying, uh, not legally, you know, disclaimers. Uh, these are privateers. Unless you get caught, then you're a pirate because we've never heard of you. Francis. I don't know any Francis. No Francis here. Okay. The most famous again, however, was Francis Drake. That's E-S for guys, I-S for girls, by the way. Uh, and he's a privateer for Elizabeth. Uh, he's a pirate, though, if you ask the Spanish. He captures ships and gold. Uh, he becomes the second in command against the Armada, uh, which they defeat. Uh, his reward is offered by Spain for him of 20,000 ducats. That's gold coins, large gold coins, 20,000 of them. <laughs> That's some money, even in today's standards. Okay. He also will eventually circumnavigate the globe. Uh, unlike Magellan, he actually makes it back in one piece. Okay. Eventually, the British will set up an empire that stretches from England into the colonies uh, in the New uh, World. Uh, British guy in here in South America. We've got colonies uh, in uh, Gambia, the Gold Coast, which is now Ghana today, Sierra Leone, uh, Nigeria, uh, all across Southern Africa, and except for uh, Tanzania, they would have gone all the way straight uh, north to south in Africa, uh, along the southern coast of the Arabian Peninsula, India, Burma, uh, various colonies over in the East Indies, all of Australia. So large of the empire, the saying used to be, the sun never sets on the British Empire because somewhere, sometime, where the British flag is flying, it's daytime. Finally, that leaves us with Amerigo Vespucci. Who are you? Well, let's talk a little bit about who he is and who he isn't. First of all, he's not a famous cartographer. A cartographer, by the way, that's a fancy name for map maker. Cartographer. Okay, he's not a famous explorer. Explorers are the guys who are in charge of the expedition. You know, Diaz, uh, uh, Pizarro, Cortez, who are conquistadors, really, uh, Francis Drake. These guys are explorers. He's not, okay? He wrote idealized stories about the new world, okay? He's a good publicist, so who was he a good publicist for? Well, his dad was a merchant, but he had no work for his son, so he asked an old friend for help, an old classmate, who had gotten to be rather wealthy and rather famous and was running the finances at that time of the Catholic Church at the Vatican. Okay, his father, the success friend, is a successful again merchant banker, the wealthiest family in Italy, if not wealthiest family in all of Europe. He doesn't lead in exploration, explorations, that's Amerigo Vespucci. He doesn't lead explorations. He's uh, the guy who they send along to sort of spy on the, guy, the expeditions they fund to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. And writing idealized accounts to draw people to want to go to those places that they find. Okay, He's kind of unoriginal. Venezuela. One day they're sailing along the coast of North, uh, South, Northern South America. They come in a village and they see these villages built up on stilts. He goes, hmm, villages, houses in the water are like Venice, little Venice, Venezuela. That's Portuguese for you. And Rio de Janeiro. Hey, it was January. They came up on a river. He called it January River. It sounds better in Portuguese, Rio de Janeiro. Okay, so which Renaissance family was it that used money to fund the arts and also fund these explorations and gave Amerigo Vespucci a job for his good old dad? That's the Medicis. Back to the Renaissance, back to Florence, back to the beginning. See you next time.